with water. Now continue the reactivity series. We are going to move on to Alto, Zen and Ferrari, that is all aluminium, zinc, iron and lead. Metal plus water. Now the reaction is even less. The reactivity has decreased to a certain level where hot water is insufficient. We are going to heat up that water. It is going to convert into steam. So the next metals are only going to react with steam. So when they do so, they are going to form metal oxide. Now if there is metal oxide, if even if it is soluble in water, is there water to dissolve it in? There is no water. So what is going to happen is they are going to form metal oxide plus H2. For the metal that do not react with hot water, arrange the apparatus as shown in the figure and observe the reaction with steam. Now for this we are using a stand and a test tube which is diagonal. Why so? See, I'll show you with the help of this bottle what happens when you keep a metal over here. Imagine the bottle cap as the metal and you start heating up. What happens is the water starts boiling. When it does so, the water at some point is going to touch the metal, which we don't want. Why? If the metal comes in contact with water, it is not going to react. So, sir, how is it going to help if we keep it like this? In fact, all the water is going to wet the metal. Interesting question. So, I'm not going to use water literally. I'm going to soak up water in a substance called as glass wool. Glass wool is a substance which can absorb 100 times more amount of water than it actually, its size. So you have to imagine it, its fiber is like glass, hence the name glass wool. Okay, so when you heat it, what happens? The metal can be anything, right from aluminium to lead. So when you heat it, we are going to use a delivery tube into a jar. Now into a jar and I'm going to invert a glass of water in it. Now the test tube filled with water. Why do I do so? You'll understand in a few seconds. Now when the burner starts, what is going to happen is the steam from a glass wool is going to evaporate. The water is going to evaporate into steam or water vapor and it is going to react with the metal. When it does so, a lot of hydrogen gas is going to lose and it is going to end up from the delivery tube. You can see the delivery tube and it is going to travel, travel into the test tube. Now when it does into the test tube, what happens is a lot of bubbles are going to be formed on the test tube. You can see there a lot of bubbles. What is going to happen is these bubbles are going to displace water and form a lot, a layer of gas. When it does so, hydrogen gas is trapped in the test tube. Hydrogen being lighter than water goes up. Let's see the reaction Al plus H2O. Now Al is reacting with oxygen to form what? Al2O3 plus H2. Aluminium valency is 3, oxygen valency is 2, Al2O3 plus H2. Let's balance the reaction. Al is 1 on the left hand side, 2 on the right hand side. Multiply it by 2. H2 is 2 and 2 on the right hand side. O is just 1, O is 3 on the right hand side. What do you do to 1? Multiply it by 3. Hydrogen becomes 6. It's 2 on the right hand side. Multiply it by 3. Let's see the next reaction. Iron. What will happen to iron with reaction with H2O? Iron again is reacting with oxygen. Iron, is it a small process or long process? It is a long process. So in turn, what is going to happen is iron, which is coal, is going to get heat up. When it heat ups, it is going to get in the excited state. The valency when remains 2, iron is going to react with oxygen to form FeO. 2 to cut cut, 1 1 FeO. Now when the iron is going to the excited state, its valency is 3. Oxygen valency 2, crisscross Fe2O3. When you add them up, you form Fe3O4 plus H2. Fe is 3 on the right hand side, 1 on the left hand side, multiply it by 3. H is 2, H is just 2 on the right hand side. O is 1, O is 4, multiplied by 4. H2 multiplied by 4 on the right hand side, your reactions are balanced. 
zinc is going to form zinc oxide, Pb is going to form lead oxide, and the reactions will be balanced in the similar manner. Now, what happens to even less reactive metals? Water is very notorious. It is going to go react, karenge, react, karenge, react, karenge, but the copper, gold, silver, they are very shy. They are going to go, nahi, nahi, kabhi nahi, thoda karo, intaza. Why? Why so? Because the reactivity, reactivity of copper, mercury, silver and gold is less than hydrogen. So will they be able to displace hydrogen? No, never. So hence, copper do not react with water. So sir, what is the reason we react aluminium with water? Aluminium is a reactive metal. It is going to react with almost every food that we eat. Whereas copper, being less reactive than hydrogen, it does not react with water. So we don't have to put a layer of copper oxide on copper. Hence copper is reddish. Whereas oxygen, aluminium reacts with oxygen, forms a dull layer of aluminium oxide on the vessel of aluminium. So hence we understand why do we do the reactions, sayonara.